All over Britain, there are archaeological sites that are too dangerous to access or excavate. They could contain unique and valuable evidence of our past, which if not investigated, will be lost forever. EXA is a team of highly skilled archaeologists. Katie Hurst, in charge of excavation. Alice Roberts, doctor and expert in human bones. Meg Waters, geophysicist and digital imaging specialist. All experts in their chosen fields who are determined to get into these inhospitable places to forensically assess, survey and extract the evidence. The expedition leader will be me, Mark Davis, volcanologist, climber, caver and diver. This is archaeology on the very edge. This week we plumb in the depths beneath Gloucestershire, searching for signs of Stone Age man. This is the Forest of Dean, a lush and ancient woodland covering over 27,000 acres on the border of England and South Wales. 13 years ago, a group of cavers were following this stream as it disappeared down through a hole in the ground. What they discovered turned out to be Britain's 10th longest cave system. Now, as they began to penetrate deeper and deeper, they unearthed human and animal bones including this mammoth tooth, a species which disappeared from Britain well over 10,000 years ago. Was it a one-off find? Was this cave system a treasure trove? EXA's objective is to find evidence of habitation for Stone Age man in and around this cave system. But in order to do that, we must first prepare ourselves for a long, strenuous and dangerous expedition just to get to the excavation site in the first place. The caves are chillingly called Slaughter Stream. We will be the first archaeologists to set foot in them. Let's hope we are not the last. Our task is to establish if the caves contain valuable Ice Age archaeology. We'll be spending a lot of time underground but the delivery team will be on hand to ensure our safety. We are going into the caves via an entrance created by the cavers a couple of metres away from Slaughter Stream. I think in no uncertain terms, this is probably the most physically demanding site mm. we've investigated. Um, so if anyone is feeling really tired, even if it's just an hour into the system, you know, do say and tell one of the, the delivery team, OK? Katie, there's a number of sites that we told there's bones in, so there's a lot of excavation food, but I think the thing to do is to, to go to the first one, and if it looks good, let's just work there, not try and, you know, bite off more than we can chew by going too deep into the system. And Alice, if uh, we've been told by the cavers that there's absolutely a wealth of bones down there, so it'll be great for you, so mm. if you can work with Katie to start off with. And we've had a specific request, Meg, from the caving group to try and locate other entrances to the cave system. Mm. So I guess if you go down and see how the caving system lies and then come back up, take a look at the GIS and, and see if you can find any, and that'll be magic, yeah? Great. We do have a reasonably strict time limit, eight hours underground. It's because when we're underground, things tend to take a lot more out of you than they do on the surface. You know, when we're digging and when we're you know, just sorting through the archeology, span you'll be t twice as tired down there. It sounds hideous. <laughs> We've all got small cameras on our helmets, as some parts of the cave are too tight for our cameraman to work yeah. safely. This will be the last daylight we'll see for eight hours. Our first target is the Cross Stream Junction, where an ancient hippo tooth was found by the cavers. It's only 100 metres in, but it's going to take a couple of hours to get to there. The first stage is climbing straight down almost 15 metres of narrow fixed ladders, previously installed by the cavers. OK, I'm down! Meg is first in, 
and is closely followed down by the rest of the team. I'm not a natural caver, that's for sure. It's not a place that I would choose to be. So, are there four of these ladders to go down? Yes. OK. Well, they put this tight to the wall, didn't they? Shoulders can't get in. At the bottom, Meg's about to face her first real test. My goodness. Yeah, I mean, it's not one of the tightest squeezes, but... It's not? You'll have to take the pack off, you know? It's always going to be awkward. Oh, Trev, I don't know about this. Do you find that quite yeah. worrying? Yeah. It's a bit of a squeeze. It's getting really tight. Oh, I don't like this. 13 years ago, when the cavers entered Slaughter Stream, the place was littered with bones. They were carefully retrieved and brought to the surface. They found that right by the entrance to the cave. Isn't that a beauty? That's an almost complete beaver skull. Yeah. It needn't necessarily be very old. Uh, there were beavers around in this part of the world up to the 13th century. If you want something a bit more special... Right. That, I think, is an aurochs. That's one of these wild cattle. It's uh, the distal, the far end of a radius, so that's the, the equivalent of, uh, of the human wrist just there. But, right. of course, in a cow, you've got quite a bit of leg, which is actually made up a toe yeah. beyond that. Yeah. But, um, yeah, that's, that's, that's an aurochs. Aurochs were around in Britain till, oh, the Bronze Age, really. They're right. just, just in the early Bronze Age. So, you know, that's... That's quite an impressive find. And this is uh, what you wanted to see. This funny-looking little object is actually the very back end of a big tooth, a tooth that would have been about so, so big. Mm -hmm. And it's the... It's on the left side. It's, the, it's the, the last lower molar of a mammoth, um, woolly, woolly mammoth. And... Uh, the teeth come through one after the other, the cheek teeth come through, so this is sort of back here in the jaw. Okay. That's a nice find there. And this is taking us back into the last ice age. This has to be at least 10,000 years old and it's probably quite a lot older. That's an impressive age range for yeah. a very small group of material. <laughs> 10,000 years ago, when mammoth roamed the forest of Dean, so did ancient man. This means there could be ancient human and animal bones in the caves. Our task is to find them and bring them to the surface. We're in a labyrinth of solid limestone caves formed over hundreds of thousands of years. Our guide is Paul Taylor from the Forest of Dean Caving Group but he's got a word of warning. We, we, we have had a, one accident on this pitch in front where the guy fell 15 feet. Really? And that was because the, the anchor fell off where they'd put their ladder. Oh, gosh. Came off and he fell 15 feet. Was he all right? A uh, broken leg and a broken jaw. Yeah. And about six or seven hours to get him out. Oh, just from no. Here. So, you all right? Yeah. What exactly attracts you? <laughs> to coming down these places. I miss my life. I mean, I just, you know, just totally do it all the time. I think you are completely insane. Well, Katie, I think we should look at ourselves first. Because <laughs> we do seem to end up doing this all the time. <laughs> we are 25 metres below the surface, but amazingly, we've only travelled seven metres into the cave. With a big team, we move in single file, I'm waiting for people to catch up. So everything is taking twice as long. As we squeeze further in and further down, oxygen levels will drop, as will the temperature. We'll tire quickly, and if we get wet, there is a risk of hypothermia. We've finally reached the balcony pitch. Next, we've got a 10 metre drop into the darkness to the next level. The only way down is on a rope. Oh. Amazing drop. Come 
not. This is an amazing chamber. And it just... And this is all made by just water action on the... On all the water rock. action. Yeah. All water action, yeah. It's, it, it needs, the water needs to be acidic. Okay, take in! So the water rushes off. As soon as it comes into contact with the limestone, it begins to etch away yeah. and start excavating down through all the little cracks that um, were put in place when all this rock, and bear in mind, this is marine rock. It used to be underneath the sea when all this was squashed together and big fractures and fissures everywhere. To add to the delay, we're dragging down the latest in video technology to try and set up a communication link with the surface. This is the bit I'm not looking forward to. You'll, you'll be all right. Because it looks horrible. After three hours underground, we're 50 metres down, but only 30 from the entrance. We've used up half our allocated time here. We haven't reached the first site, and we still have to tackle one of the toughest parts of the cave. We are 50 metres under the Forest of Dean, looking for evidence that Stone Age man lived in this labyrinth of caves. We are still heading to our first excavation site, the Cross Stream Junction. It's only another 23 metres away, but we are faced with a squeeze we've all been dreading. In places, it's barely five inches wide, so we have to breathe in to get through. There are two streams running through the caves. If the cold and wet wasn't bad enough, some of the streams carry untreated human sewage. Everyone all right? Yeah, not, yeah? not that happy, really. But Why? Well, it's just a bit of a miserable place, isn't it? Just yeah. all the squeezes and it's very cold down here as well. That is yeah. the scariest thing I've ever done. Really? Squeezing through that, that tunnel. Yeah. And I kept thinking, oh, I'm nearly there, I'm nearly there. And then Paul would say, well, that's halfway. And I'm like, Okay. Well, you've done it. I mean, that's the thing you've yeah, got in, yeah, so yeah. it's good. The only... <laughs> Mike, how long have they got? Three quarters um, of an hour? Less than an hour, yeah, and then we've no. got to really start making right, our way Right, can we say that um, it's now uh, four o'clock? Can we say that quarter to five, everyone has to be back at this stream junction? It doesn't matter what you're finding. If we say move, we mean move. Okay, right. Yeah. Yeah. Discover the past with exclusive ancient history documentaries and ad-free podcasts presented by world-renowned historians from History Hit. Watch them on your smart TV or on the go with your mobile device. Download the app now to explore everything from the wonders of Pompeii to the rebellion of Boudicca and the mysteries of prehistoric Scotland. Immerse yourself in the captivating stories of this remarkable era by signing up via the link in the description. Meg and I are going upstream to dig on a silt bank on which cavers originally found some bones. Katie and Alice are heading downstream to where a hippo tooth was found 13 years ago. When they first broke in uh, to the cave and came downstream, the hippo tooth was literally just lying here, just there. Well, was it on the, uh, on just, the surface? Just, just, just on the surface. There was no excavations done. I mean, it was almost one of the first bones that they find. If the hippo tooth was actually on the surface, the stuff underneath is going to be really old. Yeah. It's going to be even older than 50,000 years old. Yeah, unless, of course, the hippo tooth was washed out of older sediments further upstream, yeah. and then it could be lying on top of younger sediments. Yeah. We've got less than half an hour left, so Meg and I are starting our excavations. Okay. Oh, this is it. This is it. Yeah. OK, Meg. Well, we've not got long, so you better do what no. you've got to do. We'll just do a, a one-metre swath like this, I think, just down here on the edge, coming off of the wall. And what's important, actually, is we're going to have to measure the, the, the depth of the features when we find them, although I imagine that you have some sort of churning around of soil and uh -huh. artefacts and things uh -huh. with the water. But I think what we'll do is we'll just measure down. I'll, we'll fix a point in the ceiling that we use as a main location, and we'll measure down from there. Right. One meter we are looking for human and animal bones dating back 50,000 years. That's in the last ice age. As a volcanologist, it's a time frame I understand. 
but archaeologists have their own way of dividing up the period they call the Stone Age. Well, the Stone Age refers to the, the whole period of human activity in Britain up until you get metal cultures. So there's the Paleolithic period, which is um, the majority of the Stone Age. Uh, that covers the whole of the Ice Age and really just up to the very end of it. Then you've got the Mesolithic period, which in Britain is, is quite long. It lasts up until, ooh, say, four four or five thousand years ago. Yeah. And uh, tacked on at the end of that, you've got the Neolithic period, um, which is a new Stone Age. And then you move into the Bronze Age. Within a five mile radius, the Y Valley is littered with artifacts and bones dating from the Paleolithic period. Why did early man choose to live here and what was Britain like back then? Well, over the last oh, 600,000 years or so, there have been people in Britain, but they've been coming and going, mainly in the warmer periods until you get right up to the end of the, of the Ice Age and they would be moving into an environment which was inhabited by lots of quite large animals, large mammals. And depending on exactly what period of time you're talking about, those animals change. We can work out roughly where we are during the Ice Age according to what animals were turning up uh, in association with human activity. With no time left for excavations, Katie and Alice are going further downstream in search of bones. Oh, wow. This so that's is the gorgeous. It's like a rainstorm. Wow. The caving team have promised us that there's no sewage in this part of the cave. Oh, that's beautiful. Wow. Back on our site, we've run out of time. Hey guys, hey. hate to ruin the party, but it's time to uh, start packing up. We've already gone over cut off point, so okay. we need to literally pack up now. Mm -hmm. um, the other right. guys have come up in the chamber, so we're going to start getting them moving. Okay. It's a huge disappointment. We found nothing in the sediment. Next time we come in, we'll start excavating the area where the hippotooth was discovered. Six hours underground, and we dread in the return trip. We wet, cold, and bruised from all the squeezing and crawling. And now we are faced with a 10 meter climb up a rope ladder. That's it. Oh, no, no, no. Keep your feet off the wall, Katie. That's not good. I did exactly what Mike told me not to do, which was to put my feet on the wall. They moved a stone. It's just really dangerous. It's really stupid. It's just so tiring there coming up there. I just wanted somewhere to put my feet other than the step ladder. Well, eight and a half hours later. We've plummeted to the depths, got to the excavation site. As yet, got no significant finds that tell us that Stone Age man did actually live down in the cave system. It's hard to imagine, actually, how they could access down to where we were. And at the moment, my gut feeling is any finds that we come across must have been washed in with all the intricate stream beds that plough down through the ground. Yesterday was about logistics. It was an absolute nightmare. The sheer size of the team meant that there was a number of bottlenecks right the way down through the cave system. And that's not good for morale because people begin to get cold and pretty miserable. So what we've decided to do today is to split the team into two groups, an underground and a surface party, and that will make us far more efficient. Katie and Alice will go back down to the excavation site and continue their search for evidence of Stone Age artefacts. Meg and myself will come up on the surface and we'll hunt around for other 
possible entrances to this cave system. You know we've got the worst of it to come yet. Ye joking? Yesterday was only to, you know, the first base camp we've got to get to the real sort of sections of screen. We've got to go to all the really tight areas and, and actually climb up some quite high rock faces down there. Well, how much further is that from where we were? About um, another hour. Maybe. Another hour? In a smaller team, Katie and Alice are moving a lot quicker. They've reached Cross Stream Junction in just one and a half hours. That's half the time it took yesterday. So our plan is working, but it is taking its toll. Oh, my knees have got so many bruises on it. <laughs> it hurts. They're going to dig on a sediment bank where cavers found a hippo tooth. The hippo died out in Britain over 50,000 years ago, in the last ice so. age. This is probably the best area in here. If we put um, a slot through here... Right, so we we'll, get sections. Exactly, we'll go there. through all the sediments. And I think this is actually where the hippo bone was found in the first place. I think it, yeah, I think it was just about yeah. around there, so... so it seems like a good place to start. So if we take some of these boulders out... I'll just sort of mark it out. Yeah. Something like that. So what we're trying to do is work our way through the layers. Yeah. And um, record how those layers um, have formed. Yeah. And uh, if we find any bones, then, we then you can we'll know the, what level they were found. Exactly. Yeah, it can start giving an indication of time-wise. Exactly, yeah. While Katie and Alice have been digging, delivery team leader Mike and local caver Paul have found something surprising. Katie. Yeah. Alice. Yeah. Paul just happened to notice <gasps> in here. Bones. The yeah. things that you've been looking for. That's exactly what we've been looking for. And they're not they're not planted. We're literally just standing here watching you guys dig. Yeah. And chatting and Paul yeah. just pointed them out. No, I bet you feel really smug, them. don't you? You feel <laughs> quite smug, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, I don't think it's terribly exciting. It's, it's a just, carnivore, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, just it's, this is this is a dog tooth, I think. Um, and presumably it's just dogs that have I mean, fallen down boxes. holes and yeah. you know got washed out. I, I mean, we've got them. Yeah. Oh, I think well the best done. thing probably is just to bag them up and take them up to Andy, isn't it? What's that? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's a tooth. You have? Yeah. Any idea what it is? I've actually no idea, but it's um, it's certainly it's not human. No, it's not. Human. Um, and I don't think it's hippo either. It's really weird, doesn't it? It's all sort of. It twisted. is. It is very strange. It's almost like it's got two roots fused together. Yeah. Uh, it's an anterior tooth. It's not a. It's not a cheek tooth. A molar tooth. I can tell that much. But we need somebody like Andy. I'm just going to wash it in the stream a bit then to try and Ooh, try and well clean it up for him. That's a bit more like it. Does it look any clearer? No, it's starting to look like a stone now. I'm so much less sure about it now. I think I've got all excited about a stone. Oh, Katie! They've been down there for three hours, and all they've found are some teeth possibly from a modern domestic dog, and one that could be a stone. There doesn't appear to be any ancient bones here. So Katie and Alice are closing the trench. They head in back to Cross Stream Junction and are ready to move on to the gravity dig, where the cavers know there are more bones, but Katie's got a problem. How far away is the next site? Um, Distance-wise, it's only about 100 metres. Oh. Um, time-wise, so time 20 minutes. 20 minutes. Yeah. Depends on how long it takes you to get through the the little tight piece, really. Yeah, because I, I, I know it sounds really <laughs> pathetic, but I think I should go back up because I don't feel too good. I don't, no, yeah, I don't no. think that's pathetic. I think if you're feeling, no. if you're feeling tired, yeah. if you push yourself further, I just you've think got that I'm going to really back. struggle getting back up to the top as it is. And you're feeling really tired, don't you? Yeah, I'm just shaking. Really? Yeah. Yeah, I'll take yeah. back up and we'll yeah. just go slowly and take it easy because... Yeah. 
We don't want to rush you if you're not feeling great. Right? Yes. Okay, well, go study. Yeah. I hate this ladder. I've got absolutely no strength left in my arms. We are 50 metres under the Forest of Dean, in the Slaughter Stream Caves, the first archaeologists to have excavated down here. We're looking for human and animal bones dating from over 50,000 years ago, back in the last Ice Age. But the cave is beating us. We've crawled, scrambled, contorted our bodies, and all we've found are modern animal bones. And as yet, we don't know how they got in here. It's the team's second trip down, and Katie, our lead archaeologist, has dropped out exhausted. Hi, Katie. You all right? Yeah, I just, I just felt so shaky down there. I just didn't think I should stay down. Really? Yeah. Well, it's best that you come out straight away. Anyway, yeah, I mean, I, because if you, if you got even more tired, um, yeah. getting you out would have been a pain. What's the matter? Oh, uh, just, I just not feeling very well and um, I just I'm very I feel very, really weak and shaky and uh, they were going to head off and it was going to take at least 40 minutes there and back mm. yeah so and it was going to be really tight coffee oh thanks mm. so um, I mean I didn't even have the strength to get up that long ladder they had to haul me up they hold you up is that yeah you? so not feeling too good yeah. at all yeah I just I'm just yeah I'm just not on top form at the moment Alice is still deep underground on her way to the gravity dig. With Meg and Katie back up top, she's the last remaining member of the archaeological team. Four hours into the caves, and at last she's spotted something. It's too short. For yeah, it is much too short. For a... Human. <laughs> but the top end of it here is um, quite sort of similar shape. What kind of bone is that within the body? It's a radius. Um, so, in other words, it's one of your forearm bones down here. It's very thin. Um, bone. Yeah, it is. Could this be the ancient bone we've been looking for? Further upstream, Alice has found more. It's a bigger bit. OK. Well, I think that's human. What makes you think? Looks like a human shin bone, which is down here, obviously. Um, and this is the this is the lump that you can feel on the inside of your ankle. Um, That's really exciting. It is very exciting. They look old, but she'll need to take a closer look back in the lab. Okay, if we, if we just Alice has there, to press on, sure so she'll pick them up on her way out. So we're going to be climbing up, up here, Alice, right. uh, where you can see this trickle of water coming down. Yeah. <laughs> After squeezing, crawling and climbing, Alice is faced with another 10-metre ascent of loose rubble just to get to the excavation site. OK, climbing. Oh, it's really slippery. Oh, wow. I can see bones already. Just scattered over the surface here. It's amazing. Yeah, well, 
Well, I hate to ruin the party. I know we've taken all this effort to get in here, but... Oh, Mike, don't. We've only got five minutes. Five? Oh, no way. Five minutes. So you are literally going to have to grab what you can. Um, have a good look now on the head cams. There's yeah, I'm just taking some photos. So, yeah, I'm going to go and get those ones back there. They've got a three-hour journey back to the entrance. Perhaps it's just as well Alice doesn't know that at the top of the gravity dig, she's only 10 metres from the surface. Katie is sufficiently recovered from her underground ordeal to discuss with Andy Curran the bones from Cross Stream Junction. Pieces here, these all seem to be dog teeth. This is the um, upper carnassial tooth, this is the shearing tooth. Um, that one I didn't recognise at all. Really. It's a tooth you don't often see, mainly because it's right at the back of the dog's mouth. <laughs> but that's that's its last molar. These are little fragments that probably go with that. From the jaw. Huh, yeah. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what else have we got? That's a stone. stone I think. Oh no, no, it's it's the root of the tooth. This is what we found right next to the the hippo tooth area. I'm not excited by it. You're not. <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing terribly unexpected. These are the kind of animals that you expect on a modern farm. Alice has excavated and retrieved a small collection of human bones. Could this be the evidence of early man that we're looking for? Oh, my light's gone out. Hello. My light's gone out. How was it? Alright. Big trip. Yeah. It was a long day. It's strenuous. We've got some. Yeah, uh, yeah absolutely. Can't yeah. Really exhausted. Pretty cool yeah. finds in there. Oh, a bag full of bones. I think it's because I'm a human. Really? Really? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Are they in your trap? Yeah. Give us yeah. the bag yeah. of the bones yeah. and uh, we get it cleaned up. <coughs> Brilliant. Yeah. Good. Well done. Good day. Back in the lab, Alice has cleaned up the bones and has examined them for any clues. This was the first one I found down in the stream, and when I first saw this, I wasn't quite sure. I thought maybe I was kidding myself and it was wishful thinking that it was human, but it actually is. I mean, now that I've cleaned it up and had a good look at it, it's a human radius. So that's forearm? Yeah, right. yeah, it just sits there in the, in the forearm. Um, the other thing about it was that I noticed these marks on it, and I was thinking that they might be cut marks, so they might be evidence of defleshing, which is part of the burial ritual in some prehistoric societies. And I showed it to Andy Curran and he immediately disabused me of that. And in fact, what it is is, is rodent tooth marks um, on the bone. So a little rat has been sort of gnawing away at it. Two fragments here of, of the same tibia or shin bone. Right. And this is also in the stream. The unfortunate thing about it is that because they're all in this stream where you've got human sewage coming down, it means that they've been contaminated with more modern carbon. So we can't radiocarbon date it. All we know is that they're old. The thing which still intrigues me is how on earth they ended up down there in the cave. These bones are old, but they are not Ice Age. And so, our search continues. We're in grave danger of collecting an enormous amount of bones with very little meaning, no story attached. So every single member of the team today has a set of specific instructions on what to target. But I think to maximise time... Katie will stay on the surface. In her place, we send in Jim, our field archaeologist. But this will be his first time in a cave. I think what we're really missing at the moment is some um, bones from a really secure context. We need stratigraphic layers, because everything that we found at the moment has just come from the surface. It's just been washed in, right? Well, we, we assume we it's, assume it's it. been washed in. I don't think the ones in Gravity Dig have been washed in. I think they've just fallen from the ceiling. And I think that if we dig down in there, we might well, find something about it. That's what we really need to establish. I still want to find out how the human and animal bones got down into the caves. 30 metres away from the entrance is a geological feature that could answer my question. It's a sinkhole where the ground above a cave has collapsed, creating possible access points. See, so, yeah, so, so this is a typical sinkhole. In fact, you could find them even smaller than that. You know, this, this is rather large, I think. I, I, this Isn't is it? quite impressive. Yeah. yeah. But you, you can imagine a, a stream running, you know, underneath us, mm. etching out a bit yeah, of a cavern, yeah. and then the whole thing, like it's a piston, yeah. sort of collapses downwards. 
if I was a farmer and um, I was dealing with a you know group of dead animals or uh -huh. the odd dead animal uh -huh. once in a while, I wouldn't go to the trouble of digging a hole to get rid of them if I've got somewhere like this at the bottom of my field. <laughs> it's a natural dustbin. Yeah. If we find a sinkhole above where Alice and Jim will be at the gravity dig, it could explain how bones got down there. Meg hasn't been able to carry out any radar survey because the ground is just too uneven. So she's working with mapping specialist Pete Wilkinson, trying to locate the gravity dig on the surface. Pete's using our GIS system to pinpoint the gravity dig. Then, if there's a sinkhole above it, Pete will find it. So what I've done here, Mark, is I've taken the information from the GIS and I've extracted it onto the pocket device. So now we can bring it out into the field to use. We've marked on the sinkhole that we want to try and find. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to use this tool to draw a line between the two. And that's going to tell me that it's a distance of about, well, between 14 and 15 metres, and it's in a, on a bearing of about 70 degrees. Yeah. So if you can tell me which way north is, yeah. if we can uh, walk in about 14 metres in that direction. OK, well, north's in that direction. So, so bearing of about 72 degrees. Let me set it up. And it's about 14 metres. In fact, it, it, it works out that it should be just down on, on this stream bed, so we just have a little. Uh, Great. Little so look. Alice, Alice, and the group are just they're just below us here. They should be just 10 metres below us. Well, this is obviously it's, it's a little stream bed. It's not a not a sinkhole. Yeah, you've got to put it in the whole geological context. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, in limestone terrain, the river will run across the top. Soon it'll find a, a crack which will start to etch out, and that becomes a sinkhole. Right. Um, and that can drop down, find another plane of weakness, and carry on horizontally. So you begin to etch out a big cavern, and parts of that cavern can sort of collapse on it. Sure. So one minute sure. you've got a sinkhole, yeah, mm -hmm. and there's animals falling into it, and then the next minute it can be filled up again. So these things tend to switch on and switch off. The sinkhole above the gravity dig may be a dry stream bed now, but I'm certain that sinkholes have been opening and closing above the cave for thousands of years. This could explain how the ancient animal bones got down there. Jim! Alice! Hello! <laughs> you made it! <laughs> How's it going up there? It's pretty good. I hadn't seen it before, so I'm just sort of having a, a quick look around and getting the lay of the land. Brilliant. <sighs> Hello, Jim. Hi, Alice. Oh. How are you? I'm really cold. What have you done? Well, at the moment, what I've done is, is um, I've sketched and measured out this cone of material that we've got collapsing down from the hole in the roof. So what I'm just trying to do now, I've been collecting material from different sections in it, mm. and now I'm cutting down into the bottom. When you say material, bones? Absolutely. Yeah. I'm just feeling a bit cold now. It so is really chilly up here. I know, for some reason, it's much colder up in this section of the cave, and I've been up here for a good hour or so now, so... Well, do you want to... Do you want to go... Down to the bottom and go for a wander. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I think what I'll do is just sort of wander around to just warm myself up. Yeah, go and get warm. Alrighty. So my feet are freezing. There's a cold draught at the top of the gravity dig, and the temperature has plummeted to a few degrees above zero. You're not doing so well. I just can't get my body temperature up again. I'm just a bit concerned. Okay, and you've got really hand. cold hands as well, haven't you? Freezing cold hands. Cold hands, cold toes. Yeah, All right. My feet are like blocks of ice. All right, but you've had something to drink, haven't you? I've had some glucose tablets, something to drink. Okay, well, yeah. let's get you out. We'll get out slowly, because the longer you're down here, the worse it gets, obviously. Yeah, so we'll take you out now. And uh, right. so let's just take it slowly, but steadily out of here. Alice is the last member of the team still working. But she's not alone. Alice, this is Mark. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Loud and clear. Good. What was that about Jim? Uh, well, when I got here, he was um, he was looking really cold actually, and uh, he went down to warm up. But he's 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 feeling pretty ill, so he's coming back up to the surface. Okay. You see what I mean? It's all that mud on it. It's it's the mud, and it's the fact I've just got no energy left. 
the climbers said that you know I needed to get get out, and uh, I started, I disagreed with them and said no, you know I need to stay and all this kind of stuff. And um, apparently I was just been told that's one of the symptoms of hypothermia is that you become irrational. I don't think I had hypothermia, but um, I was certainly a bit irrational about it. But uh, when I started stumbling around and, and falling over, I, I, I realised I'd probably better move. And it's good that I did because it was very very tough getting out of there. In our search for Ice Age bones, it's Mike, not an archaeologist, who heads deeper into the 14-kilometer cave system with Paul. Onto my belly. I don't know we've got at least another half an hour, maybe even 45 minutes ahead of us at this kind of level of crawling. Only experienced cavers can travel this far into the caves. It's extreme, even by Mike's standards. They 150 meters below the surface and three kilometers from the entrance. Paul wants to show Mike possible evidence of previous life in the caves. Really can't see. Oh, wow, well, look at that. Most certainly. The prints look like they belong to a small dog. It can't have wandered in by the same route we've taken. It must have come in another way. But what happened to it? And where are the tracks taking us? Mike, leader of the EXA delivery team, is four kilometers from the entrance of Slaughter Stream Caves. He's on the trail of some animal tracks that are leading deeper into the cave system, leading them to a perfectly preserved dog skeleton. There's a lot of reduction in size from a living animal down to its bones and to this kind of carcass size. So it was a, it was a good sized dog. The cavers found the skeleton 13 years ago and quite reasonably won't allow it to be taken out. Experts have examined photos and have said it could be a hunting dog up to 10,000 years old. I've just got this really horrible vision of this poor dog wandering through here, banging his head, because he would have had to jump up and down certain parts of it. You know, it's pitch black down here. There's no way whatsoever that he's going to be able to see. Back at the gravity dig, Alice is using the fibre optic link to show the dome what she's found. I've got Andy with me. You've got some bones to show him, correct? I certainly have. They're the ones that Jim has been digging out. I haven't seen anything that looks like um, human bone. OK, Andy, can you see this? I think it's probably a cow's jaw. From the shape of the jaw, it's a cow. I can't quite see the teeth very well. No, I think... This is going to be a case of getting it back up to the top and, the, and cleaning it. Are the it. teeth flat on the uh, biting surface? Or is it a saw-shaped pattern? Um, <laughs> trying to feel through the mud. I think they're flat. Yeah, it, it, just I'm a, not sure. Just a hint, it might be a horse. I don't know. My, I feel it's a cow. We'll, we can tell when it gets up to the surface. But more of the... I mean, it's, it's all domestic it animal looks, stuff, It looks it? domestic again, so uh, more of the same. Right. It's unlikely we'll find anything older than a couple of hundred years at the gravity dig. So Alice is closing the trench. This area of the cave must have had a recent sinkhole open up over it, through which animal bones fell. It's been a disappointing trip so far. Alice is frustrated at the lack of finds. But having spent five hours underground, Mike has finally surfaced from his epic journey. Hey, you boy. I am completely exhausted. Oh, yeah? Oh, yeah. Where have you been? We ended up in this open chamber that's got big silk banks on and littered literally all over the top of the silk banks are bones. And, you know, I, I wasn't going to go digging around because no. I know that's not what, we meant, what you know, I'm meant to be doing because I'm not an archaeologist. You fetched back the bones, though? I didn't have any bubble wrap with me, so I had to, believe it or not, take a, off a woolly hat and put them in this. And I've been really careful on the way out. <laughs> How are you going to tell from these? I don't know. I mean, that's your job. They all look very 
crumbly and small and well, well the first thing to say is that the they're completely different preservation from everything that's come out so far. Right. This looks like really old bone to me. Right. Mm. What about that? Wow. Well, that has got to be elephant bone. Is that that's, right? That, that's probably that's probably our old mammoth. That's got to be. Look how thick walled the bone is, and it's 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 sort of cancer tissue all the way through. That's that is. That is really exciting. Oh, that's bit... Pleistocene bone. That's Ice Age bone. That's an elephant. Yeah, yeah, well, a, a mammoth. But a mammoth is an elephant. So yeah. What I'll be honest, there are a few more bones oh, up this, there. Oh, this is yeah. this is nice. This is very nice. This is part of a humerus. That's the elbow joint down here, and it's something really quite big. I mean that that. I don't know. I'd have to compare it with other stuff. That could even be a woolly rhino. Really? Wow. Oh, God. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> You've done a really <laughs> good job. It's been worth Excellent. coming. It's been, yeah, it's that's, good. I'm really that's pleased. That's brilliant. Because we did actually, you know, we had to question whether we should pick the stuff up, but... When did rhino go extinct? They disappeared before the end of the last ice age. It was about, whew, 25, 27,000 years ago. In, in Britain. Jeez. So that's so, yeah. That's yeah, and amazing. You had that in your I mean, hat. Yeah. I had that in my woolly hats, yeah. I, Go back I, down and get the rest of it. Go on. It's I'm, a long way, I tell you. It's I'm a good couple of hours in. This is, this is old bone. This is sort of middle of the last ice age type of stuff. Um, wow. Uh, 30,000 years and older. That's wonderful. Uh, and uh, although these are only fragments, they're very, very exciting fragments. And this is where the mammoth tooth turned up? Exactly where the mammoth tooth turned right. up. Wow, well, that's perfect. That's right. yeah. I mean, th this is exactly what we were searching for, because we were talking this morning that these sinkholes switch on and off, they fill up, they cement up, and then a new one opens up again. So on the gravity dig, it's all we find in is domestic animals. So yeah. it's not really speaking that, that interesting, not that old. And we were speculating, wouldn't it be nice to find a gravity no. equivalent with, with old bones in no it? Bones, because if you yeah. find some of them, the chances are there's going to be a whole host of stuff in there. So I, I'm hesitant to say it, but there are more bones up there. There are. Yeah. What are you doing up here, then? After closer examination, Andy confirmed we had found woolly mammoth and woolly rhinoceros bones. They've been dated between 30 and 50,000 years ago the last ice age. We only went four kilometers into the cave system and there's another 10 that need investigating. There may well be an ice age entrance to the caves somewhere in the forest. Alice is coming out with only a handful of bones. It's all she's got to show for almost three days oh of dangerous and deep excavation. <laughs> 23 hours you've been down there over the last three days. Oh, no way, really. This is the first time she's seen Mike's remarkable discoveries. This is superb. This is better than we can have hoped for, I think. Oh, that's and what an amazing story. How lucky yeah. you went off on that little diversion. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. And this probably dates from the period when... Neanderthals are coming back into Britain yeah. after a very, very long period of absence, after about 100,000 years when there were no people around. Yeah. And this is when we begin to pick up Paleolithic archaeology again after a really long gap. Mm. So it rather puts this cave on the map. It's great that both you and Alice are happy. Oh, I just think it's, you know, it's amazing. We've had human veins out of there, we've had animal veins, we've had fossilised veins. Had it's just... No. It's good, and then, oh, you know, for, for such a short period of exploration, mm. I think it's really pushed information about the cave a long way forward. Yeah, absolutely. Mm.